Hi. In this video, let's take a look at this MOTS Tool G1200 digital microscope that is specifically designed for electronics work. This was sent in by Banggood for me to review. For people doing a lot of SMD work, especially for those who make a living by repairing electronics, an inspection microscope is almost a necessity. Now, I have used some real cheap ones in the past, and I wasn't really a big fan of those. The main issue I had was the stability of the supplied stands. And given the significant magnifications involved in these microscopes, the stability of the stands are absolutely essential. Now, this microscope comes with a metal stand, and it looks and feels very sturdy, so it is a promising start. And it is currently on sale for just under $70, which is quite inexpensive especially considering the 7-inch LCD that is included here. So let's take a look at how well it works and whether or not it is worth your money to include one of these in your toolbox. The microscope itself came in a few pieces and you do need some very basic assembly. Basically, you have to screw this vertical stand into the base itself and then everything puts in together nicely, very easily. This microscope can be powered by either the building battery or a supplied power adapter. Unfortunately, the power adapter supplied does not come with a US plug, so I can't use it. But uh, you can see that it's just a standard 5 volts power supply, and I do have uh, many of these. So I have already charged it up, and it's ready to go. Now, let's power it up. And as you can see, it powers up pretty much instantaneously. Now let me put a board underneath here, and we'll take a look at uh, this microscope in action. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is how large the working space is. Right now we're at about uh, around 12 centimeters, which is about slightly less than 5 inches. But that's actually more than plenty if you are working with a SMD soldering here. So for example, if I just pretend I'm going to solder, and you can see that we have uh, plenty of space here, and that's not a problem. And in fact, at this distance, the magnification is already very good. So let's uh, adjust focus here a little bit. And uh, the focus adjusting knob is not the smoothest. And uh, you know, sometimes you overshoot, and uh, it, it does take some back and forth adjusting. And you can see here also it's, uh, it has a lot of play here. But uh, once you get a hang of it, I think after a few adjustments, you are able to focus it pretty sharply. The second thing is also we have this uh, backlight here. So you can adjust the backlight, depends on your lighting condition here. So now it's totally off. Let me just uh, turn it on. You'll see what I'm talking about here. And you can see that it comes in handy. Sometimes you cannot see the marking on the chip and you may be able to adjust the backlight to make it more prominent here. And one thing, of course, because it's a cheap microscope, it does not have a polarized filter here. Therefore, it depends on the angle of the light, you may or may not be able to see the markings. So you have to adjust it uh, manually. And uh, let me swap in another board and uh, to take a look. So here's a, an LCD board that I have, and we can see Again, you can see the focus pretty well. And of course, we can fine tune it. And uh, you can also see the chip. Now, what I was talking about earlier is depends on the lighting. For instance, right now, the backlight is off. And you can see actually the chip marking here. But if I turn on the backlighting, and in this case, you can't really see because it's going to get washed out. So let me just adjust it. And you can see that is totally washed out. One unique feature of uh, this microscope is that you can actually tilt the, the back here. So the stand right now is at vertical. And depending on which direction you want to view the surface, you can tilt it. For instance, we can uh, tilt it this way. And this is actually very useful when you are working with the large boards. Sometimes it do need a certain clearance, and also you might want to adjust the angle so that the flare is not in your view here. So in this case, we can see that uh, marking very easily as well. Now, I don't know how well it shows up on the video camera here, but uh, in real life here, it's actually working out very, very well. And now I have readjusted it to the upright position. And let's take some measurement at the field of view here. 
So right now I have a ruler here and you can see we are looking at about uh, just around 2.5 centimeters which is uh, just around one inch. So that's the working area we're talking about here and uh, obviously the vertical will be far less so it's about 1.5 by the look of it just a little shy of 1.5 centimeter so it's about three quarters of an inch and that should give you plenty of space to work on so for instance if i'm pretending i'm doing some live soldering here and you definitely can see that you can see these uh, these very very clearly and also there's no video lag so that when you're moving your soldering iron everything is moving at the same speed as your hand which is a very very critical as if there's any lag you will not be able to perform live soldering under this microscope and with the highest working distance this is actually the lowest magnification but even this this is more than enough and uh, if you do need a little bit of a higher magnification at this uh, working distance you can always use the manual key here to increase your digital zoom here so now keep in mind this is not analog zoom it's digital zoom but you can see it is doing a good job especially if you are viewing this uh, lcd from afar uh, the digital zoom can definitely help out. So for instance, right now we're at four times the digital zoom and we can change it all the way back to one. And another critical thing about uh, working under a microscope is the focusing depth. And you can see that on this board, everything is in focus, including this uh, side metal piece here that has a little bit of depth. So I'm going to bring in another board here. This one definitely has more of these uh, protruding elements. And as you can see, let me try to readjust it to make sure it's in focus. And you'll have no problem seeing the top and the bottom of these components, which is a very very important when you are doing soldering and doing inspections here and of course if you need a higher magnification you can always zoom it in by lowering the head here so as you can see we can drop it all the way down so let me get to about here and this is probably the closest you want to get so right now it's a little bit darker also it's out of focus so let me try to focus it first and turn on the backlight here and so we can see what is going on. Now, I do wish they have the backlight adjustment on the front panel as it sometimes it's very hard to feel where it is at. But uh, after you get used to it, I'm sure it's fine. So now you can see the depth of the field certainly comes into play now. I can focus it right, right now on the trace, but uh, the top of the chip is a little bit blurred. And that's a natural, uh, so we're very, very close to the board right now. But at least you can get an idea. We're looking at roughly just a few millimeters of uh, working distance here. The focus is very, very neat. And you can see that we can definitely use this magnification to inspect whether or not your soldering is done correctly, whether or not there's any cracks on the soldering or the PCB traces, for instance. So definitely very, very clear here. So it is quite impressive to see how much magnification you can get when the video head is all the way close in onto the surface. And even at this normal working distance, the magnification is more than adequate for most of the work. So now let's uh, briefly take a look at the user interface here. As you have uh, seen me using it before, it is quite intuitive. So we have, uh, let's see, we can switch between video recording and uh, picture recording. So when you press OK, right now I'm taking a picture of uh, this board here. So you can see that when I switch it to the picture mode. And you see that's the picture we just took. Of course, you can always uh, export this by connecting it to the computer or just by hooking up the USB and uh, directly transfer the files to the computer. Uh, the card, it, by the way, is not included in this unit. You have to supply the micro SD card yourself. Now we're back to video recording. Of course, you can record video while you are doing this as well. So let's take a look at some of the menu items we have. And uh, not sure how well you can see this. It has uh, this overlay and you can see the, uh, the background image. But uh, 
just by the look of it, you have all your recording type of uh, adjustments here. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look at the menu here, by the look of it, it seems that uh, this is actually the same firmware as a lot of the dash cams, as you can see the cyclic record. And uh, you can see that you can record three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes in a loop. Uh, of course, that's not what you want to do for your uh, circuit board inspection here. But uh, just thought it's uh, interesting to see that. And uh, let's take a look at what other options we have. So we have auto power off, we have a frequency, and uh, let's take a look at what this frequency is. Oh yeah, so this is actually right now set to 60 hertz. I assume that is to prevent the power line affecting the uh, image filtering. And right now we're in North America, so we set it to 60 hertz, which is uh, the correct setting. And you can see that we have a bunch of uh, other settings as well. So that's the video camera settings. And now let's uh, take a look at uh, the picture mode and what settings we got. So you can see that we have different uh, resolutions. And right now I'm setting at the 3 meg, and I think it's more than plenty. And of course, you can, if you really want to go to town, you can set it to the, wow, it has a 12 meg. Yeah, that is actually the maximum CCD resolution here. So not entirely sure if that is necessary. In my opinion, 1080 and uh, a little bit higher is definitely enough. So I will export a few pictures and we'll see the picture quality of this uh, microscope here. So I am actually quite impressed with the performance of this microscope, especially considering its price. Sure, there are a few things to be desired, but uh, it does exactly what it is designed for, and it does the job quite well. You will definitely see me using this in my future videos. And if you are interested in getting one of these, you can check out the link provided in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed this review video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. I will catch up with you next time.